Hey, this is Mark Henry, author of Dancing with Energy, Healing, Magic, and Mysticism. Well, today I'm going to be talking a little bit about a fun subject, a not-so-serious subject, um, that catches my eye once in a while, and that is the relationships between celebrities and rumors of a cult, knowledge or the supernatural. So, let's begin. Uh, the first thing that I notice is that celebrities at times have been accused of either acquiring or applying occult knowledge in order to advance their lives or their careers, their, especially their performances. Um, now, this could be not just them using spells and that sort of thing, but it could be some type of interaction with the supernatural. Uh, a lot of times, uh, some people say that these celebrities have acquired their talent through some type of um, occult dealings. Uh, now, it's sometimes it's difficult to, to tell whether this is started by the public or if it's actually started by the artist and their camp in order to present a certain image of their brand. But I kind of want to explore it nonetheless. Uh, first thing that I, I've I've seen is that first claim musician X uh, has made a pact and sold their soul to the devil. Okay, so you'll find this in several artists um, that as far as surrounding themselves with their reputation. Uh, the first one that comes to mind is usually the most popular one is the grandfather of the blues guitar, Robert Johnson. Uh, Robert was the first one to be inducted in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and he is kind of the person that stands kind of uh, that kind of in the forefront of the beginning of the blues and blues guitar. Now his story, the way that it works out, it goes something like this and there's several different variations. Is that Robert always knew that he was going to be an extraordinary blues player, guitar player, and he desired this so much that one day as a young man he received some spiritual guidance that he needed to go to the crossroads in Mississippi with a guitar and he went there and he encountered a stranger and the stranger is said to be the devil. The devil was there and he played, the devil played his own guitar and then he motioned to for Robert to give him his guitar, and he did, and he tuned it, gave it back to him. And after that, Robert had this extraordinary skill and soon became popular um, in his brand of music. But you know, that's not the only one, um, as I mentioned. The second one I wanted to, to say something about is the uh, 19th century Italian uh, virtuoso violinist Niccolo Paganini, who also is rumored to have made some type of deal with the devil in order to acquire his extraordinary skill. Um, up until this time, no one has seen a violinist of this caliber. Uh, Paganini uh, could actually play so well that when his violin st string would break, he could, with the remaining strings, can play uninterrupted, which was unheard of. Uh, he also had this appearance that probably provided that hook that he may have been, you know, possessed with some type of demonic energy because he was pale, tall, and long fingers and wore all black. He uh, also had the reputation of being unattractive, but he seemed to have scores of women um, at his feet. So he had this type of charm and charisma that wasn't apparent, probably through his music. But to those who don't understand what's going on, they attributed it to some type of supernatural cause. So that brings us back to uh, the next claim. Next claim is that, okay, so this uh, celebrity musician has acquired and applied some type of supernatural knowledge, maybe by occult means, in order to 
make themselves more popular or more talented. So first up we're going to talk about is Beyonce. And this one stands out in my mind because I actually feel like that this is probably slightly more likely uh, than the next example I'm going to um, give you. Um, and it's because over the last couple of years, if you know anything about uh, Beyonce, is that uh, several interviews, she has several interviews that I've, I've watched about her where she will talk about this particular essence, which she calls Sasha Fierce. Now, Sasha Fierce, what she says is an alter ego, a part of her personality deep within her. Now, when I watch those interviews and I start to talk about her, especially the early interviews where she talks about Sasha Fierce, so I look at her body language and I don't quite believe, I don't think that, which, that she believes what she's saying. I believe that she believes that it's something supernatural. Um, what I would term a muse, a particular entity that actually helps uh, artists, musicians with their craft, uh, help them with performances, um, and you find a whole, you find this throughout the ages. I'm actually going to write a chapter about this on my, um, in my new book. Um, but anyway, uh, Beyonce, um, but by the way, um, Beyonce is also, uh, and Beyonce and Jay-Z have been um, accused of being in the Illuminati, um, which you know, I think I think is, is sometimes funny when I see all the Illuminati stuff. But you know, you never know. I'm not automatically dismissing anything. Um, so uh, what Beyonce actually is quoted as saying, and I'm going to read this to you quite straight off, um, is she was doing an interview, and she says this is before the BET Awards, before she became popular as a solo artist. Um, she wrote, writes, I remember before I performed, I raised my hands up and for the first time I felt something come into me. Describing what she felt before, you know, she had her coming out at the BET Awards. Um, and this particular thing is, this is an interview about Sasha Fierce. So, what I interpret that is something coming into her, like um, a spirit, spiritual energy, um, what could be a uh, partial possession, maybe an invocation. Uh, she has an, a whole album side that said, I am Sasha Fierce. Sasha Fierce, by the way, because um, I didn't explain it, is the, you know, Beyonce claims to be reserved and to be quiet type of person, yet Sasha Fierce is aggressive, seductive, um, more outgoing. So she is the compensation for what Beyonce is not. Um, she claims that, you know, when she, she doesn't even, when she does music by herself, by her own abilities, that it isn't as the high quality as it when Sasha Fierce is there. So there's um, a little bit about Beyonce um, and Sasha Fierce. So whenever you see her on the stage and moving in sometimes very uh, aggressive, seductive ways, uh, that is probably Sasha Fierce. Okay, next one uh, is Kesha. And I didn't expect to come across this um, when I was doing my research. But uh, Kesha, you know, if Beyonce was uh, is supposed to be part of the Illuminati, Kesha, I guess, would be part of the Illuminati because she says that she was inspired by a, um, to create a song called Supernatural based on a experience, experience with a spirit that she had. She's also said this in several interviews. Uh, she's, the story goes like this, is that she was living at uh, a former residence stayed there for a while and she noticed a presence in the house she says that the presence uh, would observe her over um, a period of days and weeks and didn't interact with her but she perceived it and then uh, at some point the spirit began touching her and they had a uh, sexy time as, as she said it um, so 
they had um, spirit sex. And as a result of that, you know, she came up with that song, The Supernatural. Now, that is not um, something that's unheard of. I've actually came across uh, an actress from Paranormal Activity 2 who um, claimed the same thing. Um, so, I guess the, the question is, is, is some of this stuff with celebrities, is it more about them coming up with the idea in order to promote their work? Is this like kind of like a gimmick, a publicity stunt? Or is it more a product of an artist who's drawing upon their experience experience and using that to create their art? Um, who knows? Um, only they know. But I uh, wanted to kind of bring that out there, do something fun about celebrity entertainment. So thank you for listening. Um, I hope you have a good weekend, and I will see you soon.